All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, oh, I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends and let us do the good work for today. Uh, today we'll try not to stay for long because I have many things to do. Uh, you know, I'm trying to finish the book, the the one in the Indonesian language, to be ready before the Christmas, and that needs some some work. So uh, today. Our question is to the Muslims, and my Skype is open in case any Muslim like to call us. What make your God, God? I mean, it's a very simple question. You see, if you worship something, even if it's a frog, that's your God. But it is not what make the frog, uh, let us say, not to be accepted to be God, being a frog, it's about, I mean, it's not a look. Absolutely, it's not a look. What if this a frog, he is almighty and all-powerful? I mean, can you choose your God look? Can we devi define God by his look? So like God, he have to be in certain look. Something we like, he's your God. I mean, he, he is in control, it's not you. He is what he is. You like it, you don't like it, you have no choice. But God, which is not his look, will make him qualify to be God. It is the inner, it is the wisdom, it is the ability, it is the mighty power, it is the, the, the dignity, the decency, etc. Muslims look like they have different kind of God. If we ask a Muslim, <clears throat> what make Allah qualified or what qualify Allah to be God for you? Very simple question. You will find the Muslims have no answer. They don't know all what they knew they've been told that there's a God his name is Allah they don't even know what Allah mean Muhammad himself never spoke to Allah never met Allah never even heard the breed of Allah and here we notice that we have a problem That when you are a Muslim, you are a copy-paste person, and you are not really a person who follow God. You are just following what people told you to follow. There is something it's called the theory of the cattle. You know, like if you walk in the street, and you make five of your friends look at the sky, and then you will notice everything, everybody in the street is going to start looking at the, at the sky. If you make a circle in the middle of, uh, like you can try that, Go in the middle of uh, the, the town, downtown, like the, the, the major square of the city, and get a bunch of your friends, let's say 10, and make a circle and start looking down. You will see how many people they will gather behind you and try to look to see what is down. Not because there is something there, but people, they get curious. They want to they see why, why you are looking down. And there is many naive people that do the same about worshipping God. Just because there's a huge num number, you know, number of people, they worship a God. So we worship that God. I mean, obviously, there's no way those people are wrong. Which is very stupid. So who is the Muslim when to give me a call and tell me why he is worshiping Allah? What make Allah God for you? The look, you do not know how he look like. The power, you have no idea what power he have. Or what you heard that somebody told you, somebody told somebody, somebody told somebody, somebody of somebody, and the somebody of somebody, he told somebody that your God, Allah, is almighty and he is powerful. That's all what you know. Who is the one who created the ocean? Allah. Okay, you have a proof. Who is the one who created the fish in the ocean? Allah. Okay, do you have a proof? Who is the one who created zucchini? Allah. I can show you the word Allahu Akbar on the zucchini, brother.
when the time will come and you start using little of intelligence you hold in your head or whatever left of it what make Allah Allah or let, let us say what make Allah God because Allah is a name of the God of Islam as you know what make him God the Muslim they say to us some description about their God okay this God he don't eat he don't sleep he have no uh, he have no spirit he is not a spirit so what is your God maybe he is a concrete I mean the description of your God is very weird the Muslim they say to all to us that Allah he introduced himself to us I did read very carefully all the Islamic scriptures if we can call it scriptures and I found that Allah is like with my respect to ladies Allah is like a woman who gets so old and he have nothing to say and to talk about and I can prove it easy so she start gossiping. I mean have you ever heard of God of gossip I will give you an example as long as we mention this let me open a verse give me a second I mean how silly this God is this God he speak like that what is that all right here we go chapter 66 verse number one two three you can read them all when the prophet confi confided or confided a fact into of his wife or wives okay hold 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 on you know when the prophet he told his wives a secret or he told them something and when she afterward you know told people about it I mean, what is that let us change the translation by the way when the Muslim translate they do poo poo they don't translate this is not translation what is this translation anybody understand anything literally I don't understand anything let us see let change the translator uh, this website is weird okay where is the translation Ahmad, Ahmad Mirza, Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Ali, uh, Raza Khan. Let us try Raza Khan. Hmm, nothing changed. Maybe we need to go here. Look like the translator did not change. Okay, this is big tal. Let us see. Uh, let us see Shakir. Maybe Shakir will do better. And when the prophet secretly communicated a piece of information to one of his wives. But when she informed the others of it, Allah made him to know it. What? What, what? The one who is talking here, this is God? My grandma, she spoke to my ma, and my ma, she spoke to my auntie, and then my auntie, she spoke to the neighbor, and my neighbor, she spoke to the neighbor, and the wife of the husband, of the wife, of the wife, of the wife, of the prophet, and when the prophet re received the information. This is God talking? What is this? Muslims, what is that? This is God. This, this, this is God, God. This is God talking. 
when the prophet told one of his wives the wife she told the other wives and then the other wife they told the other other wives of the every wife of the count of the county and the whole town knows about it and then the news arrived back to the prophet and Allah informed him look 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 Allah informed him I mean obviously the secret is all over what do you mean Allah informed him And Allah made him know it. Wow. I mean, Muhammad, he have a CIA. It's called Allah. The wives are talking about it everywhere. And look, Allah informed him. That's deep. That's truly, truly deep. So Allah, he made him. Yeah. Okay, what, what? Allah made him what? Please don't say that. Come on. I don't believe you. You must be kidding me. Allah, he made him know it. Know what? Know what he said to them? He is the one who said that to them. He made known part of it and avoided part. What? What does that mean? This is God talking? Guys, look at this deep wisdom. Allah, brother. Let us call Zakir Naik. Tereden, 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 tereden. Assalamu alaikum. As Christian Prince, Christian Prince, please, for the God, for the sake of Allah, leave me alone. I told you one million times, don't call me after middle of the night. First of all, I might be having sexual intercourse with my wife now. Secondly, this is sexual harassment. Number three, I have no answer for you. Brother, but we have a question here about this verse in chapter 66 verse number three I mean what Allah what the Prophet he told his wife a secret and then the secret is spread around and the secret became very well known And then Allah told him about it and then Allah he made him know part of the a part of it and avoid the part What is that part? Okay, I will tell you first of all Don't ever listen to Christian Prince. He always first of all show me your faith Show me your faith, I will give you the answer. Uh, uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, the people want to know. It's not forget about Christian Prince. I cannot forget about seeing your faith. I am sure you had in your faith because of a very, 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 very reason. Very, very good reason. Okay, Zakir Naik, maybe I don't look good, man, like you, you know. You look good. I don't look good. Why do you want to show my face? I know it. I know it. I am sexy and I know it. Thank you very much. Now, as long as you admitted that I am more sexy than you, and now this is why you don't want to show your face, now let me give you the answer. <sighs> Unbelievable. Okay, brother, what is the answer? Allah Prophet, he told his wife that he is not going to sleep with Maria. Some scholars, they say it is not about Maria. It's about who is going to be the caliphate after the Prophet. And the wife, they spread the news. And that could the problem. Uh, brother, are you saying that your prophet, he made a mistake by doing that? First of all, prophet of Allah never made a mistake. As an example, there is a story that the prophet, he used to cook and his eyes did the clothing. Uh, brother, the prophet used to cook and his eyes did the clothing. He used to cook what? I will explain to you. The Prophet, his favorite food, it was Adwa. Uh, adwa is the palm tree fruit. You don't cook it. You idiot. You idiot. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Adwa is cooked in the mouth. You put it in your mouth and you cook it before you eat it. Thank you. Do we have any Muslim want to give us a call? Look like Zach and Nike. He have no idea what he's talking about. Oh, what I understand from him that Christian Prince he don't show his face because he is sexy and he know it. And Christian Prince look ugly. Anyone? There's no way that this conversation is God. God don't talk like that. This is a bunch of you know uneducated people having gossip. 
and God obviously he worked for Muhammad Muhammad here is reporting what happened he made a mistake he did a poo, poo he told his wife something he should not tell if we go to the interpretation what the interpretation will say about this story let us see as long as I can make he would not tell us this is the seer at Jalalain <clears throat> And mention when the prophet confided to one of his wives, namely Hafsa. I mean, look, 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 namely Hafsa. The Quran did not say Hafsa, but here they knew the Muslim they knew a certain matter which he has, which his uh forbidden of Mary, Maria, which means to sleep with her, telling her, Don't reveal it, don't reveal it, okay? Don't reveal it, okay? After five minutes. The whole town knew what Muhammad said to Hafsa. <laughs> but when she told everybody and she told Aisha and the news became very popular, you know, like she, she posted that in Facebook, in Twitter, in Instagram, I mean, all over. The prophet is not going to drag his uh, private part and have sex with Mary. And there is uh, to be no blame in doing such a thing, and God appears to him, praised him and informed him of it, of what had been in the evolved the judge of the jaws. Uh, and then he announced a part to Hafsa and passed over a part. What does that mean? Muslims, are you serious that this is what your God talk about? So imagine this Christian prince, he have 13 wives, and Christian prince he said to one of his wives, I will not sleep with my slave Maria. My wife should go tell the other wife, and the other wife told 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 come back tomorrow, and the other wife told the other wife, and the other wife told the other wife, and the other get it tired, the other wife told the other wife, and then the news arrived to Muhammad by Allah. Not by the wives. You see, I mean, look, 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 look. Muhammad is aware of everything happy around him. It is Allah, brother, who informed him that his wife, she spread the news. And then, supposedly, this is interpretation for the story. But anyone understand? But when she divulged to Aisha, uh, there will be no blame in, in doing such a thing what does that mean and God appraised him uh, 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 he informed him of what had been uh, what does that mean and he announced part of it to Hafsa what does that mean he announced part of what what is this I am truly, truly convinced that this is the word of God. That's it. Only God can talk like this. Gossip. Two women sitting in the in the in the in the side of the road talking about their neighbor. Any Muslim don't agree with me? If this is how your God talk, I mean, what about an, uh, uh, my grandma? Even my grandma don't do that. She is a very respectful woman. What is that? What is this? This is God? This is a chapter made by God? And then Allah, he threatened the women of Muhammad. And he said to them, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you repent, both of you, if you repent, uh-huh, if you both of you turn to Allah, then indeed your heart are already inclined. And if you back up each other, oof, 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 against him, against whom Muhammad, look, 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 the fight is getting really hot. Muhammad, you see, guys, this is why we we Arab, uh, 
we shave our hair I mean we don't have hair because simply if you have many wives I mean you imagine what will happen to your head every day Muhammad now Allah reporting to us it is not the lady next door it is Allah reporting the story Allah himself the Almighty supposedly the one who created the seven heaven galaxies uh, 7 11 he is have nothing to do in the whole universe at that time the Roman they were fighting with the Persian there's thousands of people being killed million of people displayed from their houses houses are burned cities are burned chaos slavery killing unbelievable but Allah is busy now please don't talk to me I have a very big problem brother the Prophet wives they have a fight with the Prophet I mean do you notice here how big the problem is please please and Allah was receiving phone calls the Roman they are attacking the Persian the Persian they killed 1,000 Romanian women and the Chinese they are invading 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 villages in 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 Thailand and the Japanese they are invading the Chinese but Allah don't care Allah is busy and focus Allah focus in a big problem huge problem involve the security of the universe hmm. uh, dr green is that arabic supposedly call me dr green so we can love so the god of the universe is involved now in the fight between the prophet and his wives Muhammad he told them he promised them he will not sleep with Mary the cook the fight is getting bigger Muhammad he slept with her again he broke his oath the wives they made a strike against Muhammad they start throwing zucchinis and cucumber and old tomato and damaged eggs Allah himself he called the security council of the heaven and the earth urgent meeting the end of the world is happening the wives of muhammad is in strike against the best man of the universe this is god if this is how god speak what he left for the rabbit you see the quran says that Allah is the same as a rabbit how we knew that from here you know what the rabbit do he keep moving his mouth if you notice right he keep moving his mouth I mean, you think he's talking but you know he's saying nothing I mean you hear nothing the guy is just uh, uh, you know repeating him thing you know so Allah in the Quran he says the 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 words of Allah if the whole if the whole uh, uh, ocean was <clears throat> ink if the whole ish ocean was an ink the ocean ink will not be enough for the word of Allah And now we know what Allah is talking about. Chapter 18, verse number 109. See if the sea wear ink the word of my Lord. The sea would surely be consumed before the words of my lord are exhausted hmm. that's interesting i mean here we knew that allah must be god he took a lot we have a god who took a lot K 
can your God talk like my God talk a lot talk a lot but he said nothing can your God report to us the most silly stupid stories and by the way if Allah keep talking and the ink of the ocean will not be enough for his words so why the Quran is so small I can print the whole Quran in less than a little tiny container of ink Hmm? Where is the rest of the words of Allah? Allah is talking to who now? Muhammad is the last prophet. Allah talking to who? Atahadak and Kunta to Hakan to Amin and Allah Hakiki and Tony. Uh, the guy, okay, green, green, green. He's saying that, Mr. Green. Why you don't call me, my friend? Call me. Call me my friend and make victory to your God and trust me Allah will will, will support you look <clears throat> Allah is willing to support even Muhammad with his fight with his wives So do you think he will not support you against Christian Prince? I mean come on Allah have nothing to do Eh, nothing no TV no internet nothing the wives of Muhammad they have a fight with the Prophet Allah look and look who is involved in the fight just to support Muhammad I mean the fight obviously big Two women of Muhammad, they have a fight with Muhammad because it says they're both. Do you see the word both? And then Allah said to them, and if you support each other against him, which means Muhammad, guess what? Guess what? What? Then surely Allah is his guardian. Ish, 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 ish. But Allah is not enough because Hafsa and Aisha, they are very strong. They used to go to the gym every day. I was there. So Allah is not enough to be a guardian. We need more help. And Jibreel, if, 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 if Jibreel with the 600 wings, Mr. Jibreel with the 600 wings is going to join the fight. So now we have Muhammad and Allah and Jibreel against two women. Still, the war is not ready to go. Because they cannot make it, obviously, Aisha and Hafsa, they are very strong. And every believer, oops, 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 ISIS, the Caliphate, Al Qaeda, Takbir, Taliban, brother, Pakistan, Mujahideen, and Indonesia, Allahu Akbar, let us wage war to sponsor the Prophet against Hafsa and Aisha. But all of this is not enough yet. And the angels, look what is left. I mean, what is left? The whole universe is involved in this fight. We have two women, they are five foot tall, and Muhammad is fighting the wives, and Allah, and, and Jibreel, and the believers, and all the angels are supporting the Prophet. So imagine yourself watching a TV show. We have one side, we have... Hafsa and Aisha, let me draw that. You know, I'm very good in art, as you know. Actually, there's many museums, by the way. They contacted me and asked me to, uh, you know, uh, to do art, you know. I mean, just for charity, let us say. So, you know. Okay. So we have, we have the following situation, which is very complicated and dangerous. All right. In this side, we have Hafsa. This is Hafsa. Obviously, she is big. That's why she is scaring the hell of them. And this is Aisha. And she is a small. And in the other side, we have Muhammad. We have who? Muhammad. We will call him Mr. M. Plus, Allah.
بلس جوجو او الكول جبرول جيجي جيجي ذا وان هو كم اني تايم يو نيد هيم ذا بيتزا جاي بلس جيجي بلس ايسيس بلس القاعدة بلس تاليبان بلس افري مسلم بلس اول ذا انجلز ناو هو Who you think is going to win this war? Hmm? Who you think is going to win this war? Obviously, Aisha and Hafsa, because if Aisha and Hafsa is not super powerful. Why Muhammad he need Allah and Gigi and Sisi and Susu and Kaka and Kuku and Tali and Susu and Mama and, and, and Angels? I mean, everybody. Don't use bad language in the text, please. Crusader, no need for that language. Don't go down to that level. Nobody use bad language in the text. Only Muslims are allowed. Put yourself in their shoes. Do we have any Muslim want to call us? Who is a Muslim when I... Oh, oh, oh I forgot. I, I learned the phrase from uh, uh, Muhammad Hijab. Show me. Silence me. Answer me. Okay, who would I do that now? Any Muslim? Show me. Silence me. Answer me. Hello? This is God? I thought God is almighty. I mean, he say B is going to be. What is this? This is a fight between a bunch of women in the street. This is cannot be God. This is cannot be God. The language, the topic, the speech have nothing to do with God. A man having a fight with his two wives. What is the involvement of all those guys there? If Muhammad have internet in his time, what he will do? He will open a chat room and he will start saying, Allah help me. Allah, Allah told me I will do jihad against Hafsa and Aisha. And the Muslims in the text will say, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, take a beer. What is God? What is the prophet? What make this man a prophet? What make this God God for you? Do we have any caller? Do we have any caller? Only Muslims. Don't call me if you are a Christian. All right? Don't call me, please, if you are a Christian. I want to speak to Muslims. <clears throat> and you know this God is unique this God he cannot hold himself from speaking about science because he knows everything I mean name one thing for Allah do not know he 
He knew everything. Bani Abdul? Aisha, by the way, she is not a stupid woman. Aisha, she is smart. She noticed that Muhammad obviously is running a scam. Look what Aisha she said. Let us find the hadith. She said in Arabic, Inni ara rabbuka yusari ila hawaka ya Muhammad. She is not stupid. This is why Muhammad he is in trouble. Muhammad always he have his God ready to sponsor his sexual desire. Anything about sex and money, Muhammad his God is there right away. Aisha she said, I feel jealous of women who offer themselves to Allah Messenger. If 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 mean imagine Christian Prince was a prophet. He's a prophet of Allah. He opened his donation box. What he found there? He found women who they are naked. You see, Muhammad, he received everything. Everything is okay. Money is okay. Private part is okay. I mean, just come to daddy. Come to daddy here. Come to daddy. The prophet, he will take you. Hmm? Women they are offering themselves to the Prophet. Why? I mean, don't you see there is something wrong here? What is the purpose that Allah He made verses for Muhammad that women they can offer themselves? Muhammad already have many wives, my friend. Muhammad is a praying to God. He have no time to have sex with all those women. No, you are mistaken, my friend. Muhammad, he have a time for everything. Women offering themselves to Allah messengers. What is that? A sacrifice? What is that? What does this have to do with God? What does this have to do with the prophethood? Why Muslim women they have to take off their panty and sleep with the Prophet? Any Muslim? What is the purpose of this? Okay, Muhammad is a prophet, and Allah He sent him to deliver a message. So why Allah saying any Muslim woman she wanna sleep with you, Muhammad take her? What is that? And this is only a privilege to Muhammad alone. You see, the Muslim, they lie to us and they say, Muhammad was a Muslim. Who is a Muslim? The Muslim who obey Islam. But, but what Islam? Obviously, Islam is Muhammad. Islam is not Allah. Muhammad is above the law. A Muslim man, he can marry only five, you know, four girls or four women. But Muhammad, he can have unlimited. In the top of that, he is not enough for him to have unlimited women or wives. Any woman she can give herself to the prophet or somebody he just uh, made a donation so I can buy coffee thank you very much thank you guys for those who make a donation I really appreciate you all right I hope I will make enough donations so I will be able to have unlimited number of women and the and the Muslim they say to us that uh, the prophet was very poor I mean the guy he have officially according to Muslims 13 wives how somebody is poor, he can open 13 houses and every woman she have slaves. Do you see how poor he is? I am worried about my heating bills. Not about opening 13 houses. Muhammad was poor. So why he took the fifth from every attack? 
Brother, do you know that the prophet, before he died, brother, he gave his weapon to a Jew, so he borrowed money from him, brother. Hey, brother, I have a news for you, brother. When Muhammad died, there was no Jew left. Muhammad killed them all. He borrowed, he borrowed the money of the Jews, he killed them, and he took their money. Do we have any Abdul wanna call us? Anyone? Thank you, my friend from India. Thank you, everybody. I, uh, re please forgive me if I don't answer you in text. If you say hello to me, if I say love to me, I love you all. But be careful. I am an Arab. And I might turn a prophet anytime. And because of that, I'm a qualified to love women only, brother. Any woman, even women, she want to give herself to the prophet. She's welcome, brother. What is that? I mean, the prophet, obviously, he's very unique. The Muslims in their books, they say that the prophet father, Abdullah, when he was going to sleep with the mother of Muhammad, the sister of Waraq ibn Nawfal, or an Arabian woman, she offered him to sleep with her in return of 100 camel. And I was saying to myself, man, 100 camel to sleep with the women at that time? Not at that time, actually, only even now. If you have 100 camel, you have to be really rich. You must be really rich. 100 camel to sleep with the man. Okay. <sighs> you know, my dad, I feel sorry for him. He was not a father of a prophet. Therefore, no women offer him 100 camel to sleep with her. Otherwise, by now, we would be rich. That's not fair. At that time, 100 camel is equal to 100 car today. So imagine you are going down the street and the woman, she offer you 100, uh, let us say, uh, Range Rover. Me. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim here? Please don't forget to download the video and share it around after we finish because I'm not going to keep my videos in my channel. And the reason for that, I want people to Download them and share them. Do we have any Muslim on to call us? Feel free to give me any topic you wish about your prophet to prove to us that your prophet is a prophet. And by the way, when somebody says Muhammad is a prophet, have you ever heard of a prophet? He have no prophecy. The Muslims, they have tons of hadith saying that Muhammad, he prophesied. Really? Like what? I will give you an example. Does something come to my mind? According to Muhammad, when the judgment day come, the Roman, they will be the majority of mankind. What? Are you serious, brother? The brother, are you serious? The Roman, they will be the majority of mankind, brother. Where we can find the Roman, brother? I heard Allah Messenger as saying, the last hour would come when the Roman would form a majority amongst the people.
Okay, Muhammad. Where is the Roman now, brother? What happened to my microphone? Let me, let me, I, I forgot. When I start my broadcast, I forgot to say, inshallah. Mm, this is why I think. I know why. Here we go. Now it's better. The Roman will be the majority of mankind. According to my knowledge, Italy is a small, tiny country today. And the population of Italy is really small compared to the world. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Hmm. Why you call me? Come on, Mr. Uh, Muslim, why you call me if you will not talk? Please, if you are a Muslim and you try to call me, I want you to get permission from mommy and daddy before you call me. I don't want you to blame me for calling me without permission of your parents. Muslims, is that a false prophecy or this is a true prophecy? Let us say, I don't know why this microphone is making a noise. Let us say a person, he made a 20 statement. And let us say 19 of them come to be true. 19, imagine 19. But one of them come to be a lie. Obviously he's a liar. However, the story of Muhammad, none of them come true. But one enough to prove to us that Muhammad is a false prophet. Hmm? Do we have any Muslim? Where is the Muslims? What happened? What is today? Today is Sunday. You know, if it's uh, Thursday, I would say the Muslims are busy making babies. I don't know why this is making noise from my side. So? Any Muslim want to call us and tell us one good thing about the Prophet? You see, I insist to call him a Prophet because he prophesied. We have to be decent here. The Prophet, he prophesied a lot about a lot of things. And as you see, the Roman, they became the major population of the world. Looked like the Prophet, he never heard of the Chinese before. <laughs> Oh boy. Any, 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 uh... you see, when Muhammad he says the judgment, the hour, the second Muhammad he say the judgment day, Muhammad he always he come with a funny story. Let me copy the word judgment day in Arabic and I will paste here. And I challenge any Muslim to choose for me anything from those stories fit with today. Hmm? Which one? Look at this one. The Muslim they say to us that Islam is dominating the world. The Muslim they say to us that Islam is dominating the world. And they say to us we will become the biggest population. Look how your prophet get you busted. So now either you say that Shabir Ali, Zakir Naik, all those liars are liars, or you say Muhammad is a liar. Muhammad said, not me. Hello? Hello, Christian Prince. Yes, my friend. 
Yeah, hi. I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. I'm the, you know, the guy, the original Abdu. You are what? The original, the one I call myself, original Abdu. Oh, okay. All right. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Thank you. Yeah, I was saying it because obviously as a true Muslim, I should speak up about any corruption, even if it's my own religion, I have to speak up. Like, I've seen a lot of bad things, but I talk about it and that's why people, my, people they, they don't like talking to me because I speak the truth about any religion, even Islam. Yeah, but you, but you consider yourself now a Muslim or what? No, I'm still a Muslim, but I speak the truth about it, basically. Like, Remember what I told you about the Surah 3, Ayah 106? Mm. That, was a, that was a stupid one yeah, about when you die, you turn black, or you die, you turn white. Mm. Yeah, that was, that was a stupid, uh, stupid what, one. But my friend, okay, you, you agree yeah. that the Quran has stupid chapters, and yet you say I'm a Muslim. <laughs> How does that um, work? I don't know, because I'm just, this, this is what I'm brought up. So what I do, I, I have nothing to lose. I just pray and fast in Ramadan. That's all. I have nothing to lose. Mm hmm yeah that's so basically yeah but okay well, let, let, let me ask you let me ask you yeah you, you said that uh, first of all uh, you are welcome to call me anytime i like talking to you yeah. you sound like a gentleman thank uh, you and uh, i like to speak to people who they are they respect themselves regardless yeah, if, we agree, if we agree or not that's not an issue you said you fast ramadan yeah okay what what the quran says to you about ramadan that I don't know. This is what I was told here yeah, by, like, by family members. Yeah, how I should fast in Ramadan. So why are you fasting it, my friend? You are a smart person. Yeah, I, I, I know. There's no purpose because like, I'm asking. Uh, sometimes I ask myself questions. Mm. What am I doing it? What is the purpose? Mm. But nobody has the answer. They said how you have to think about the poor. But what mm. you mean think about the poor? Because the poor, yeah, mm. they don't have no food. Even when the sunset, the food is not there. But me, the food is gonna be there after sunset. So mm. how is that comparing to the poor? First of all, my friend, do you think really Ramadan is a month of fasting or the month of eating? Um, I think it's more like it's the month of eating because I see people so, putting on weight in Ramadan. So how you just say to me, you fast the month of Ramadan. This is not fasting. Yeah. You're eating. You're yeah. eating more. People, they get more fat, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Even I the know, price. Yeah, even the price of food, and you know that, in the month of Ramadan, go crazy. Why? Because, because people, they are eating more. Yeah, because when the sun set, they stuff themselves you all the way to sunrise. Oh, uh, actually, and the and the Muslim they spend a lot more money in in, in cooking in fancy food, and uh, the whole month became a, like a Las Vegas uh, meal. You know, like every day we have a nice food, fancy, and now not only that, we became lazy because we don't go to work. Uh, yeah, don't talk because to me, please. I'm tired. I'm fasting, please. Like and everybody shout at everybody and everybody and crimes yeah. and crimes in the month of Ramadan. Increase, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, true, true. Because I've seen a lot of people did, did, did that, I've seen a lot. Okay, let me ask you. And you, another you, thing that was you agreed with me, uh, hold on, my friend. Yeah, so, you agreed that the month of Ramadan the crimes increase, correct? Well, sometimes it depends on like, what kind of crime, no, all kind of crime, especially violence, you know, and theft, yeah, yeah, and all kind people, of crime. People, people, people get aggressive, yeah, right. but, yeah, okay. But Muhammad he claimed that in the month of Ramadan. The shayateen are going to be chained. So who is the one doing the crimes then? Yeah, yeah, you got a point there. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Uh obviously, obviously, Muhammad is making making false statements about uh, what happened to Shaitan in the month of Ramadan. Same time, if in the month of Ramadan Shayateen are in jail, who is the one yeah. doing the crimes around the world, not only between Muslims? Yeah, true, true. Because me, I, I don't know about it because I'm only doing it because this is what I was told by family members how I should fast and uh, think about the poor. But when I ask questions, mm. they don't, they don't, people don't want to know when I ask, oh, what about the poor? The poor don't have food after sunset, but we have food. So, how is that comparing to the poor? Well, as we say, yeah. you know, everything like yeah. you, you say you, you fast Ramadan, but obviously, there's no point of fasting Ramadan. And obviously, Muhammad is a false prophet because he claimed yeah. that in the month of Ramadan. Yeah. All the, the gates of heaven is open, and all the shayateen, all the satans are in in chains. In, in they are they are chained up. So who is the one doing the crimes? Yeah, yeah, cheer, cheer. You know that's that one. That's the that's the Ramadan, and that's that surah three, ayah one hundred six. I don't know if you read that surah. Hmm. 
Yeah, about about when you when you when, if you're bad, if you die, you turn so black, or if you're good, you turn so white. Mm. I'm thinking, where did they get that garbage from? I know, I, it's my, know religion, but, but my but friend, but I think I see I see something positive there. All my life, I wanted to be a black person because one of the reasons I don't have a girlfriend because I'm not black. So finally, finally, I will get to be black and I will get a girlfriend, maybe many. So thank Allah, I'm so happy. Finally, <laughs> my dream will come to be true. Obviously, this is a very, this is very racist, racist. This is very. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know that. Yeah, because I was asked, I, I was asking people that, like, why? What does it say? This is this for real? People say, oh, show some respect here, because I speak the truth, and people get angry when I speak the truth. Everyone try to silence me hmm. when I speak the truth, and. But but to, you know the, the 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 strange for me about you, that you know yeah. all of this garbage and you know it's garbage and you agree it's garbage. Yeah. You still you still yet you say you are a Muslim. I don't. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, for but, me. my sister left Islam five years ago because she said something like she she said that she doesn't believe on worshiping a pedophile, so she left the the religion. This is this is what she said. Hmm. Yeah. So now she's an atheist basically. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, my friend, you are welcome to call me anytime. Feel free if you have anything to share. I will be happy to hear yeah. you. And I hope I hope you will decide soon to leave Islam totally yeah. because, you know, obviously you agree that the Quran is full of stupid lies, and that's mean you deny Allah. I mean, so why you call yourself Muslim? You know, you make a decision and get out. You are smarter than this. You know, you don't you don't fit there. Like, what about Muhammad saying any Muslim woman she want to give herself to sleep with me? I mean, what does this have to do with God? Yeah, true. And another thing that I had when I was. When I, when I was traveling, yeah, I, I read this article about Aisha. Apparently, she was 21, but the reason why the imams lowered her age to six years old because most of the imams they have sexual desire for children. Ah. <laughs> but the one who said that it was Aisha, not the imam. It was yeah, Aisha. Basically, who said basically that. They low, the people lowered her age to mm. six years old because they have sexual desire for children. But, but, my, imams. but my my friend Aisha, but, when Muhammad when Muhammad died, Aisha she was going in her eighteen. She is not even eighteen yet. So how yeah, he married her? Yeah. He, Muhammad yeah, he married I, Aisha yeah, after I, he died. Yeah. Yeah, now I don't know because this is what people claim because her, her age being because every every is this one says she's nine years old, one says she's 12, one says 21. But me, I don't know what's the age yet. But my sister believe in how they lowered her age because the imams they have sexual desire for children, that's why they lowered her age to six years old. So then they'd be like, Oh, our prophet did it, so what can we do? Uh, uh, Somebody saying to me that uh, this is guy Tawhidi, he said that you see, Tawhidi is a big, is a big fat liar, Tawhidi. Is a is a very a sneaky man. Look look at this. Do Tawhidi remember that his his scholars, his sheikhs, he's a Shia. Al Khomeini in the book of Tahrir al Wasila, I think page number two forty one. I think is that is he's, that what they call is that, is that what they call me Khomeini? Yeah, Al Khomeini in his book uh, in the book of Tahrir al Wasila, he said that you can have yeah. sexual relationship with the baby girl who is an infant, who That's is an disgusting. infant. Yeah, and actually. I remember once I have a debate with the with the Muslim guy about this issue. Let me let me try to find it. You know, the guy he was saying that there's no shame. You know, if he have sex with the uh, you know because she's a wife, she's a wife. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is the deal. This is why most Muslims don't like talking to me because I expose my own religion basically. Yeah, because I'm the only guy. I'm the only guy who speaks the truth. The truth, basically, because I don't believe one lie. So, why lie? Just speak the truth. So I am speaking the truth. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, my friend, for calling. Uh, feel free to call us anytime you wish. No problem. Yeah. Take, Take care. care. Take care. Take care. God bless you. Take care. This is a debate between me and uh, uh, someone. He is a doctor, supposedly. He said to me the following, and this is the this is the debate happened many years ago. To identify what sexual relationship with little girl she is not even maybe a one week or two weeks old because as you see it's radia which means she's just drink milk I don't know this is what your imam saying he's saying sexual relationship by hugs read with me this is your Islamic site as you see this is not my voice my website all kind of sexual relationship like touch with desire look at the desire and hugs and tafkhid touch with desire or hugs or putting your private part between the legs 
of that little baby. This is his explanation. I'm reading just exactly as he wrote. Right. I'm not adding one word. He's saying, doing that to a little girl, she is just, she can drink milk only. She is a radia, suckling, you know, girl. It's okay. You can touch her in a sexual way to enjoy her. You can hug her in a sexual way. It's okay. Or you can put your private man hood between her legs to enjoy her. Now you tell me what you understand from that. Your mic. Okay, don't forget that this baby, okay, this Ravia is a wife. The wife. Is a wife. He's not fucking her, okay? The 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 husband is not fuck. <laughs> Don't use dirty words, Doctor. Listen, listen. I know you are in the corner. Listen, she is a little girl. What do you mean, wife? She is. She she cannot eat yet. She drink only milk. What do you mean? She's a wife, guys. She's a wife. She don't have teeth yet. How you say she is a wife? Your mic, man. Go ahead. Can you tell me? Can you tell me what's the different? What's the difference between, you know, marriage and non-marriage? You know, b between legal and uh, illegal relation. Your mic. Doctor, don't change the topic. How you can marry a little girl? She don't have teeth even. You said she is a wife. Explain to us in the room how Muslims marry a girl. She don't have her teeth yet. She drink milk only. She suckle only. How she became a wife and how he is approving you to touch her in a sexual way, to enjoy her in a sexual way. Not only that, to put your private part between her legs, your mic. Okay, we are talking about marriage, okay? You know, this you know, this situation is, is a special situation. We are not we never heard we never see, you know, we never seen a uh, husband Listen, what's special such we such a way sin, such a way sin. Listen, this is your scholars, the one you approve as a big leader for you saying you can have re relationship sexually with little baby girl she don't have teeth yet explain to us how you can do such a thing your mic okay I'm allowed to have a baby wife okay but did I have you know uh... <laughs> I am allowed to have a baby wife. <laughs> you know, if you do not know what sick mean, this cult is sick. And if you don't agree with me that this is sick, you have to be mentally sick. This guy is not seeing a problem with having a baby wife. Allah allowed me to have a baby wife. What's your problem? What's your problem? Hmm? What's your problem? Allah allow me to have a baby wife. What's your problem? A uh, baby wife. Okay. Okay. I'm allowed to have a baby wife. Okay. But... <laughs> Did I have, you know, uh, <laughs> baby wife? Do I have right yes. now a baby wife? Your mic. I don't care if you have a baby wife or not, but how your God allowed you to have a baby wife, man? She cannot even eat. She's still in her diaper. She do poo poo. How you take her as a wife? How you enjoy her in a sex way? How? Explain to us what kind of religion this religion would allow you. You have a baby wife you have it you don't have it 
your relation allowed you you can do it because in Islam it's okay all right that's enough disgusting stuff as you see guys when you when we say Islam cannot be from God I mean there's millions of reasons it's against any any even like I mean this is not you see if, let us say you are not a religious person let us say you are an atheist you say let us say you want to live like an animal even animals don't have sex with little ones animals they sniff the smell of a female when she is ready for for meat they don't go just for a little one and they have six with her they don't do that so if animals can recognize what is right and what's wrong how a human being cannot how in the world you allow yourself to have a sexual conduct with a little baby this is not a child molestation no more this is a crime you see child molestation is a crime but this is beyond a crime this is disgusting because like okay Aisha she was six years old at least she was six years old we are, we are now talking about that this is an infant baby who cannot even walk how you can do that how you even can think about it what make Muslims come to think about such a thing unless this religion is making you go far away from your humanity from the sense of a human being what make you a human and what make you an animal this is the question because we are still like animals somehow unless we have an ethic if we if we kill our ethic we are animals we will start killing each other raping each other stealing each other this is what animals do the strong take over the weak if you have a pretty wife I'll take your wife because I'm stronger than you this is what animals do there's nothing is called wife but just give an example I take your land, I take your property, I take this is what Islam doing. So my advice to the Muslims who I believe they are wonderful people and they can be even really wonderful people that Islam does not fit for you. You see there is many Muslims who have no idea what Islam is about. They think Islam is just worshiping God, his name is Allah and fast Ramadan as the gentleman who just called us five minutes ago. There is many Muslims they knew Islam is stupid, Islam full of garbage. But what they do, they ignore the fact of garbage and they choose what they like. They, they pick up their cherries. Okay, the Prophet, he said, give it charity. Even the charity in Islam is not a charity. It's a theft. He used to attack the neighbors, take their money, and then he take the measure of the money to his pocket and little bit of the money left, he give it to charity. The charity for who? For the men who die for him, their wives and their babies. He sent men to war, they die, and then he claimed that he is giving a charity. When yesterday we asked a Muslim about his prophet telling him that when you meet somebody in the street, he is a Christian or a Jew, you have to humiliate him and you have to, to force him. To walk in the sewage what the Abdul said to us he said well yeah we are superior yeah sure we can do that because we are superior this is what racism is about to make or to make to, to to make yourself think that you are superior from others so you can over or take over their rights you can discriminate them you can destroy them, you can humiliate them because you are superior, because you are a Muslim. Everything, everyone else have to be down. That's what Islam is about. The best of mankind are the Muslims. For what reason? 
Is that because they will bring for you what is benefit? Yes, the Quran says they are the best of mankind. And the Muslim, they add between two bracket for the benefit of mankind. But how the benefit of mankind work in Islam? By bringing you and the chain around your neck. This is the duty of every Muslim. To wage war, to bring the infidels who don't believe in Muhammad, and bring them and the chains around their necks. And this is what makes the Muslims are the best for mankind. You see, while the world is fighting over fighting cancer, so we can do something for the benefit of mankind. While the world is fighting to fight AIDS, so we can do something for the benefit of mankind. While the world is trying the best to, to, to form organizations to fight uh, diseases in Africa, poor people dying from hunger. While the world is trying to establish peace, Muhammad, he have a different target. Is to wage war against everybody, which means 7 billion human beings, and bring them with the chains around their necks. And that would make Muslims superior and make them benefit of mankind. How that can be from God. You saw a video saying 1,000 miracle of Muhammad. Well, let the Muslims call me and show me one of them so we can love together. I challenge the Muslim to show me one miracle. One, just one, not ten, not five, you know, just one of Muhammad. And let us love together. Actually, this is a miracle in front of you. Here we go. This is a guy. He made people go to war, kill each other, kill people, die for him, dreaming about endless penis and vagina fit for that. You see, when you say endless penis and vagina fit for that, look how funny. I don't know if you any of you is good at making cartoon. Make a cartoon about it. Imagine this. Execute my language. I'm not speaking dirty, but just to show you how stupid it is. If you have an endless penis and the penis is going to go inside the vagina and the vagina fit for that that's mean the location of the vagina of the women should be endless so the woman she is like 20 uh, uh, centimeter wide but yet her vagina is endless let me let me i don't want to I don't want to draw. I don't want to draw something dirty. But let me let me do this, just to show you the mad Muhammad and his madness. And again, we are not speaking dirty here. We are just trying to show stupidity. This is a woman. All right. Her private part is here, excuse me. All right. Now her vagina is going to be endless. Because the penis is endless. I mean, do you have a brain? Do you really have a brain? If you have a brain, use it. Hold on, let me put my signature here so you guys, you cannot, because I know, I know, many of you are coming here just to steal my paint. I know, I know many of you. And then you sit in the black market and you know, and you do like make a fortune. Let me put my signature before people, they see it. Hold on. Let me change the pen color. Okay, ZB. Look how, how beautiful. Look at it. Look at this. And then I will add like, here, or or bari dari. Okay, this is very hard now to. I mean, I, the, the the paint is gone actually. <clears throat> hmm. Any Abdul? Anyway, guys, as I said before, I'm not going to stay here long today. Just I wanted to see if there is any Muslim want to take the challenge, but look like today they are in a in a they are afraid to call, and they cannot make it. 
so uh, I appreciate really all of you and uh, uh, there's many people they are reading my books but for some reason they are not posting a review please if you get my books from Amazon regardless of the language and by the way if you speak a French please don't forget to tell your friends about my French book because this is the book which is really few people knows about for a very simple reason I don't speak French and most of my people who follow me here they don't speak French so if you know if you speak French if you have a friends please tell your friends about my French book and if you have my books or you read them please don't forget to go to Amazon and made a review don't make a false review don't say it's amazing don't say it's so beautiful don't say it's good unless this is what you believe we are not Muslims we are not say what you think if it's good say it's good if it's bad say it's bad if it's so so say so so I'm not asking you to go and make a perfect review fit with what I think is what I deserve no give me what you deserve make a review and share your comment in Amazon by the way when you share in Amazon you can always like you can when you post the, the, the comment or the review you can choose any name you want you don't have to show your real name you know what I mean so you can change like before you post it show you what the name you like to show when you post as post for you you can call yourself you know whatever iMac you know like Aisha whatever you want so don't forget to please to share your comment and even so not only to share your comment if you have a friends you want them to know about Islam because my books is a box of information it's not really a book you know my books is not really a book as much it is something very handy for you to expose Islam extremely handy things you cannot learn by yourself so uh, 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 tell your friends about it let people have it and you know and by doing that you help us in our mission and at the same time I'm very thankful for all those who support us by being here or by making donation or by sharing my videos or by downloading my videos or cutting them and posting them again for all of us we have one message to go number one is to love everybody including the Muslims you should not hate anyone Number two, Muslims, it's not their fault to be Muslims. You might be born of a Muslim family and you find yourself a Muslim. Number three, it's not the fault of the world to be ignorant if we don't fight ignorance. Because if everybody around me is ignorant, I will be an ignorant too. So we have, we have a mission and the mission is to fight ignorance. Ignorance is our problem my friend and the problem of all mankind why people that die because of cancer because of ignorance Not because Cancer is extremely hard to fight Trust me time will come and people will find how easy to fight cancer Not long time ago people used to die by flu by millions The flu kill millions And now you know how easy to fight the flu but the flu might come back in different form and then the human being he will find himself ignorant again our ignorance this is what the Bible says my people are destroyed because of their ignorance let us together Christians even Muslims even atheists or even everybody fight ignorance would destroy the earth we don't want anything to destroy the earth hello Hello, um, CP. This is Simon. Hey, my friend. How are you? Hello, my friend. Uh, I know you have worked many hours, so I won't take much of your time. Um, I, I did like that you said uh, from Hosea 4, 6, that uh, his people is being destroyed uh, due to lack of knowledge, right? Right. I live in Sweden. As you know, I've spoken to you many times. And what we need to hear is some guidance. And before you go, um, I want to ask you, is there a way where we can actually have some guidance where people who are active on social media and Christians, where we can actually have a moment where we can talk to you so you can help us create more leaders like you? Well, this is what I'm actually here. I'm sharing my knowledge. This is the best, the, this is the best we can do. 
knowledge is the problem if we don't have it you cannot fight anything you know we don't want to fight Muslims Muslims are people who need our help and so our fight is not, right. with, is not with the Muslims our fight is with ignorance it doesn't matter who is holding ignorance there's some people who think they are they, they call themselves Christian they have ignorance too you know so we don't want we don't want someone to claim to be Christian but yet he believed that he can be a KKK you know what this, this is ignorance yeah this is of course so we want to fight racism we want to fight hatred we want to fight violence we want to fight everything against anyone anything happened wrong is wrong it doesn't matter who do it so if Islam teaching violence and teaching racism then we are going to stand against Islam but not against the poor Muslims who they are just born of Islam and they think Islam is a good religion so in order to save somebody share your knowledge with him and my duty okay, so, here I yeah. share my knowledge and people they take they learn you know arm yourself with knowledge okay so let, let, let me just describe it uh, differently uh, i think i misdescribe it so information is not enough you know because you're an arab i am not right you, um you come from a um, society where your honor is very important shame is is you know you want to uh, basically not come close to it aggression is seen as something that you should respect you know in my society where i live you know aggression is seen something like you lose a debate you know you want to be nice and so on so attitudes is also very important um, so we need leadership. So we lack this. You see, um, so it's not just knowledge. It's also attitude. And I know you from from long time, CP. You speak about cat and uh, rat game. You know, when you ask a question, they will never answer these these things. You know, and it's very odd in my society. People are very very honest. It's high trust society. So sometimes we need to know how different mentality works. Um, yeah, for sure. You see, when when I speak to a Muslim, each time a Muslim call me. I don't deal with yeah. Muslims, all of them the same. I listen to him carefully sure. to try to explore what kind of a person he is because Muslims are coming from different countries, different nations, uh, different background, different ethnic, sure. etc. So always when you debate with somebody, try to speak to him in his language, in, in other way. And I'm not talking about language now like that, literally. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. whoever he is, if he is a person, he is aggressive, then you have to be a little bit aggressive because aggressive people think that if you are not aggressive like them in the in the conversation okay let me be ag aggressive right now so you can be silent a second okay so um you invite muslim to come to become a christian right yeah so i invite you right now to come to my show my name is simon takia watch and people can ask you questions you are inviting me to be in your show yes Okay. christians who are active no on problem. social media can ask you questions my friend my, my no problem you can call me when i am here the one no, no, no. The one you project. call me. What, what, what a different now. No, no, I want to show you that we basically are willing to change. So, uh, what we need here is leadership. We lack leadership, you know. Uh, my friend, leadership is not about who call who and who is uh, teaching who. The leadership is about you teach me and I teach you. Leadership is somebody is <laughs> hum somebody is humble and he's willing to learn. Of course. It doesn't matter how much you know, always you learn from somebody. So, uh, to be a leader, you have to be a servant first and number of two course, of course. you have to have patient number three you have to have knowledge and knowledge is not necessarily about you knowing arabic mine uh, no one arabic will open the keys for you i mean i show you things maybe you are not able because you don't know arabic but now you know them so it's not limited to to, to the arabic one because i show you in the screen i share with you the the knowledge i have I read for you in Arabic. I translate to you in the language you understand. So now the yes. knowledge is transformed. I have books. You know, people they can get my books, which is written in many languages. I have in Swedish. I have in uh, in, in Dutch. Right. I have in uh, uh, Holland language, uh, uh, French, etc. So now uh, 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 the key is to transform the language, uh, let us say, or the knowledge into languages. That is already done, and we are doing more. But the question is. If people are willing to learn and they are willing to learn to use what they learn because most of people they learn but they don't use it you know they stay just watching like how many people we are watching now 700 people how many yes. people are winning from the 700 to go and open a YouTube channel and to debate with Muslims and try to save them and try to spread peace between mankind and fight hatred few you know CP CP I am I am organizing soldiers for Christ that are willing to take this battle all right but we lead, we need some leadership. So I'm not gonna take much too much of your time. Can we get 40 minutes of, of your time? We can ask you questions and basically how we can develop our attitudes. Okay, no Would you be open to that? Let, let me let me know when you want, and I will be happy to be in your in I'll write you on, on Facebook, all right? All right, thank you, my friend. Take care. Thank you. All right.
yeah i appreciate all people who they stand for the truth and they are not just people who watch all right you know you have you have a duty in life you see there's people they like to go to the restaurant and eat okay maybe it's fun just to sit in you know comfortable zone and you are eating and people serving you but would be nice too if you serve others you know and I am the kind really I enjoy helping others you see if I walk in the street and this is my this is me this is how I am if I walk in the street and see somebody let us say he is loading something from his car even he's a strong maybe he's stronger than me I cannot I cannot hesitate from offering him help do you need my help this is me I enjoy helping people I go from the grocery store. I see a woman struggling with her, with her, uh, you know, pushing her cart. Let me, let me help you. This is me. I go in the bus. I see a woman. She is standing, and everybody sitting like a mule. People have no shame no more. I cannot sit down and I see a woman, even if she is young. So we need to change the mentality of we worshiping ourselves and try to be we love others and this is what Christianity is about if you are a person who lives just for yourself you will die alone and you will never be happy and alone here is not about living in a house alone it's about you lived and die alone which means nobody care for you for you never care for anyone When you share love with people, love will come to you. You will not believe it how many Muslims now they love a Christian prince because they left Islam and they are very thankful for what I did. One day they thought I am an enemy. Today they love me. Always love come back to you. You give love, you deserve love and love will come to you. Life is like a mirror. And the mirror is who you are. You smile you see a smile you are you know you try to be aggressive you will see aggression go go in the street and be kind to everybody people will be kind with you if you want to fight with people you can you can you can create a fight in two seconds it take you 20 years to make a friends it take you two minutes to lose them so we as human we should be wise in everything we do and we need to learn how to win people to what is right, not to lose them. And this is what we do. Same time, if you don't have something, you cannot afford or you cannot offer something. Let us say, if you don't have love in your heart, you cannot give love to anyone. If you are selfish, if you are crazy, if you are a person who believe in material money and etc., you know, you will end. You will end in the garbage. A person who sell himself to the devil, he worship money. He just want to make money. It doesn't matter how. Okay, you will make money. Trust me, you will be rich one day. But not. But one day you will notice that you have nothing. I advise people to go from time to time to graveyard. You see, the first thing a human being he noticed when he go to a graveyard how stupid he is. Go and attend the funeral of somebody, even if it's not a funeral of somebody you know. Because that would be a great reminder to you who you are. People, they think they will live forever. People think they will make a lot of money and they will take it with them. You will take nothing and you might die any second and you accomplish nothing. Graveyard is the best education for mankind. Because you will be shocked. All the life around you is gone suddenly suddenly there's a bunch of people around you and you are putting you in a little hole and you are no one all the one who loves you suddenly they do not know you they put you in the ground they cover you and bye-bye eh, bye-bye now if you are a believer this is not the end of life this is the beginning of a beautiful life if you are a disbeliever, that is the end of hope. That is fear. That is something you are afraid of. From. That's something you will stay your life afraid of having. It's going to happen to you anyway. 
This is why for us as a Christians, death means nothing. I don't fear death. I don't care. Come today. Come tomorrow. Come now. Next year. Who care? It is the last of my worry. But ask yourself, what is your worry? My worry is that I don't do my duty. You see, every day I say, I'm not going to open a chat today because I want to work in the book. And then I feel guilty. I feel, okay, let me open. I Let me open maybe for one hour. And then one hour became two hours. And two hours became three hours. And three hours became five hours. We have, we have a duty, all of us. And if every one of us says, it's, let, let, let the Christian prince do it, so he's going to clean this earth. The earth, the earth is full of garbage. Imagine you have a city and nobody want to clean the road. Your city will become, uh, you know, the worst, the worst place to live. It's actually, it's going to be the best place to die because you will die from germs and diseases and, you know, the garbage is all over. Somebody have to clean the garbage. And cleaning the garbage does not make you a bad person. You see, the guy who, who pick up your garbage, people always look at society in different way. You see somebody, he have a PhD. Oh, he's a PhD. He's a doctor. And they see somebody who is collecting the garbage, cleaning the street. Actually, the one who is collecting the street, cleaning the street for you is more important than the guy who have a PhD. The guy with PhD, if he did not show up, he will not cause a problem for you. But if the guy who do collect the garbage, clean your street, if he didn't show up for two days, you will be having chaos. But people always praise the one who have a PhD. And the one who collect your garbage is just uh, no one. I mean, this is guy must be the lowest of the society. This is what they think. Because a human being always is, is a you know is a person who he have different standards, stupid standard. You see, when Jesus said, Let me wash your feet, and his followers they don't want. The apostle, they don't want him to wash their feet. They could not take it. I mean, you are our Lord. He said, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. I don't know you. So learn from the Christ how to be wise. The masters are the one who wash the feet, not the one who asks people to wash their feet. That is the best of us. Our God not just a man. He is our God. We worship him. He washed the feet. If you think it's not an honorable act for you to wash the feet, then don't think ever you are a Christian. You are not. Love and mercy and to be humble what make you a person to be considered by God so he said from their fruits you shall know them not from their names not from their title you know people they create titles they love titles you see I call myself Christian Prince for I am Prince by him otherwise I'm no one Christ make me a Prince and he will make every one of you a Prince for we are the only believe in the world who believe that we are children of God. We are not slaves and servants only. Yes, you know, I can say I am a slave of God, no problem. But he did not create me to be a slave. Slavery here is not the same as Islam. Islam, Allah, he created you only to worship him. The same as we ask a Muslim why Allah, he created mankind. He said, oh, he created Adam because he wanted to be known. He wanted to be known. So, and he said, Allah, he chose Adam as a victim because he wanted to be known. So he made Adam commit sin. So Adam will ask for forgiveness. That is a sick God and we don't know him. Our God is totally different. This is why you see Christians when they pray, they say our father. They don't say our God. Even though he is our God. Yes, he is. But yet we call him our father. Relationship, 
we have relationship with God God he loves us so we have the God of love not the God of anger and madness and and echo and self-esteem so live the Spirit of God and the Bible says be holy like your father we commit sin we do sin and we get tempted all of us no exception but be holy which means it's a project to work in try do your best don't stop don't give up and this is why I'm a Christian and this is why I'm here to speak to Muslims to invite them to the best we have not for the worst we have we love them we don't hate them and I will not appreciate anyone speaking hate against Muslims or speaking violence or using dirty language please don't do that you are not helping them you are making it worse I want to say thank you guys for being here today I hope today we learn something good even though we did not have Muslims to call us today like only one Muslim called me but maybe next time we go on air we find a real Muslim who is willing to take the challenge to prove to us it's time to be from the true God until then I said to you may the Lord bless you and may the Lord give you a better and good healthy and good wealth and the wealth of God is not only about money is about you being satisfied and having what is enough for you not more not less Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again bye-bye